Okay, so I'm going to open up the meeting of the uh, Town of Deerfield Conservation Commission meeting tonight, December 28th, and it's about 6.05 p.m. Uh, the meeting is being held remotely on Zoom. Uh, certain meetings normally held at the uh, municipal offices are being held remotely. We have an alternative means of public access and the required public participation invited in accordance with House Bill Number 58 of the 193 General Court which extended the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law until March 31, 2025. Uh, we posted it on uh, the town's website and et cetera. So uh, the dial numbers and everything has been posted. So I think we're set to go with that. Um, so the meeting is open. Um, so I'm going to just go through the meeting guidelines. Uh, we ask everybody to speak one at a time, follow the Deerfield Code of Conduct, be respectful, considerate, courteous, concise, and not alternative. I also would ask, um, as a chair, to please, if you have any questions or comments, or request um, direction to me and then disperse them as necessary. And unless presenting uh, comments, uh, please uh, keep to uh, two or three minutes uh, in total. Um, so with that, we can do a roll call of the commissioners. Um, I'm just going to go through Sean Libby. Not yet. Ben Byrne. Ben Byrne here. Hey, Devlin. It's out. Hey, Mary. Hey, Mary Cloutier here. Yeah, and Pete Law. So we have three of the five, so we're, we're good to go. Great. Um, just a quick uh, going through the agenda, and I'll uh, share my screen to go through the meeting. Agenda. So, um, this is our uh, agenda for this evening. Um, so we're looking at um, the minutes um, from 11-30-2023. And Anne Mary, Ben, I'm not sure if you had a chance to review those today. Like I came out late this afternoon. Um, Pete thought she sent them earlier, but um, um, I did take a, a look through them. I have some questions on them. Um, so, did, uh, did uh, Anne Mary or, or Ben, did you have a chance to look at or review any other comments? I was absent, so I'll abstain. Okay. There's really only two of us, and there was. There's a question for me um, about the AMRAD um, for the Senior Housing Committee. Um, and she had put some note in here before she was choosing to check all the details, uh, wetlands and other resources, BBW delineation. Um, look at the high water line of Brody Brook. Um, and the check the comment. Um, Amy, did we sign off on that completely, or is that still open questions? You know, the I AMRAD, know. yes, yes, I believe we did um close okay. that, and yeah, I sent the form to uh, do um, the DEP. Okay. I believe. Yeah, I didn't have a chance to look yeah. that up. I thought we did. Um, so everything else is in place, but with with Ben abstaining, do we have to hold this to the uh, next meeting for um, approval and acceptance, Amy, which is two of us? I, I'm sorry. Uh, let's say again. What are we? So Ben's going to abstain because he wasn't here oh. in the last meeting. Um, so it'd only be two of us to um, accept the minutes. Do we have to hold that to the January meeting? I, I would say to play it safe. Yeah, let's hold. I mean, it's not going to make any difference. It's probably right. better if you have, you know, at least a quorum that was present to vote on yeah, it. That's what I was thinking too. So we're going to hold on uh, accepting the meetings um, of November 30th until our January meeting. And Amy, if you put that on the agenda for next time, that'd be great. Yeah. All right, so um, looking at the agenda, and hopefully everybody can see my screen here. Um, so there's no old business, um, new business, 
Um, the first one is a request. Um, I know to fact, a uh, request for um, what is it called? I have it right here in front of me. Let me get this now. Request for the certificate of uh, compliance of the NOI that was uh, initiated for 264 River Road, uh, Natalie Place. This was done uh, back in February of 2021. It's CEP file number 142-0224. Um, there was a site visit that we conducted, um, and myself and Sean Libby showed up to the site visit, uh, with Natalie, we went through the area. We also received the certification letter, um, from Berkshire Design Group, and I'll look for the name here in a minute to say that, you know, everything met the requirements of, of the permit and the application and so forth. And some go through here, and that was the letter that we received on uh, December 15th. Um, so, Sean's not here yet, but I can tell you during our review and talking with Sean afterwards, I, I think we we're both, you know, completely satisfied with, um, you know, going ahead with the uh, certificate of compliance um, for this uh, for this site. And Natalie Blaise was with us that day. And I don't know if Natalie, if you have any comments or anything you want to. Uh... Oh, I'm, I'm grateful for uh, for Jeff Squires for, yeah. <laughs> for coming out and providing his expert opinion because I'm not an expert. Uh, so I'm grateful for his quick turnaround on that and certainly for your review of, um, of his letter. So I think, um, you know, as far as I was concerned, and I don't want to speak for Sean, but. Um, can you hear me? Oh, there you are, Sean. Here hey. I am. Oh, Thank you cool. for bearing oh, with me. <laughs> Got to take the wins when you can. Yeah, I, I concur with you. Everything looks ship shape. Um, yeah, great. Good to have you aboard, Sean. I know those computer technical <laughs> these are uh, tough to deal with sometimes. Um, so with that, uh, was there any other, um, Natalie had nothing else to, to offer. Was there any other questions from the other commissioners this evening? Comments on the uh, request? No, if not, I would take a motion to accept the uh, request for the certificate of compliance for 264 River Road. I make so moved. I make that motion that we accept this. On the B second. All right. Motion on the table. Any other comments from the commissioners? No, seeing none, then I'll just do a quick roll call on accepting the uh, RCOC uh, for 264 River Road. Um, John Libby. John Libby, aye. Ben Byrne. Ben Byrne, aye. Uh, and Mary Cloutier. And Mary Cloutier, aye. And Pete Law, aye. So that motion passes for all. And Natalie, thanks so much. And thank you. Thank you all. Thank you for doing this within the uh, the time frame. Of the years. <laughs> it's like great. It never happens. It's wonderful. <laughs> well, thank you for your partnership as as the project evolved a little bit. It's, your, it's really been incredible to work with this Conservation Commission. So thank you. All right. Well, great. Thank you so much. Bye. Happy holidays, right. everybody. Yeah, you too now. You too. Take care. All right. Uh, the next one is the another request for certificates. Oh, um, these are the pictures. We always have this in your um in your packet, but you know, this is what it looked like. And um, you know, the way the things are working down there, the swales, the culverts, everything was working to design this this pond here. Oops. The computer's doing its own thing. Um you know, it's a little detention center and so forth. So everything looked good. Uh, anyway, so the next um, item tonight, <laughs> my computer will start moving here, um, is the RCOC for Calher Drive culvert. This was submitted by the town of Deerfield. Um, this was completed in November of 2020. Um, I visited the site a number of times. I was going through the project as well as 
thereafter, and even uh, yesterday, we were a little bit of rain coming through. Um, we had some input from the head of the BPW, Kevin Scarborough, that everything was done per plan. Um, I see no other issue. Uh, I'm going ahead with accepting this, but um, open to any other comments from the commissioners. No, seeing none, then I would you know, accept the motion to uh, approve the uh, RCOC for Kelleher Drive Colbert from the Town Deer Field DPW. And by the way, this is DEP file number 142221. I'll move to accept the uh, RCOC for um, Kelleher Drive Culvert. Okay. And a second. Ben Byrne, all seconds. All right. So there's all on the table. Any other comments, um, concerns, or anything from the commissioners? I see none, so we'll just go to a roll call vote to accept the RCOC to come here drive forward, Tom Deer to BTW. Um, John Libby. John Libby, aye. Ben Byrne. Ben Byrne, aye. And Mary Cloutier. And Mary Cloutier, aye. And Pete Law, aye. So that one passes too. Four out. Um, so the rest of this is a lot of just update stuff and looking at some additional information. Um, the next item on the agenda is a Pine Nook Road Bridge damage. And that's, um, this is covered, I wonder where you see this. Um, uh, we got the notice on December 20th uh, of this year. And there was a culvert on the west side of the uh, railroad bridge. When it was damaged, uh, this is received from um, Chief Patorek. Uh, the Matthew T. Colbert headwall collapsed on the west side of the underpass. Uh, it's then closed and was over to the rail. And um, you know what it looks like it is this you know, headwall just kind of crashed in. This is the railroad track up above. And, and that's there's a railroad there, but it's actually. Um, Responsibility, I was like the nasty would be. And so they are are definitely working on that. Um, so this is kind of a notification at the same time, from the same notification. Um, uh, I went up to Deerfield Academy um, to achieve on the I forget the date of it now, but soon thereafter. And there's there's a bridge on their their lower fields um that got totally wiped out again, the second time this year. And this whole part of the field down to the right was just, I, when, um, it was, I guess, last, it was like last weekend of floods, last weekend. I mean, this was all underwater down here, and the, the water was just raging through. Um, so, Deerfield Academy at some point uh, will need to do repairs. They had to do some emergency repairs to just, just basically put the stone back in place. So, I mean, they uh, back and forth on this. Um, but I expect they will be coming to us, um, you know, probably next year um, with a, um, an NOI expected uh, to do some additional work on this bridge, which would include um, elevating it a little bit to get it up above the water and some, some additional head walls and some concrete work and on the front and back of the uh, access. So, um, so that one. Was a part of the, uh, the package. I just want to explain that a little bit. Any questions on either one of those? The find this road damage or uh, down at, at uh, Deerfield Academy? Mass DOT is just notifying us that they'll be taking care of that head wall. Uh, this is a notification that from uh, uh, John Pajoric, the chief. Uh, the yeah. emergency management director in town that they had notified the railroad 
that they had to do something with this, that then you know it and that this is kind of collapse. And to tell you the truth, there's a lot of we've been out there in the railroad track for a few times over the last month, and there's um, a number of these crossings and culverts that need a lot of repair. Uh, the damage has been quite something. So they know that, but I think on the ES they have the responsibility of the notified. Um, perhaps they come to us or not, I'm not sure. The um, railroad, because of uh, interstate commerce, has taken a, a number of exemptions. Um, so they might just go ahead and work on this one directly. All right. Uh, let's see. The next item was the Enviro Source Line Week 12 project request. Um, this came in from this one, yeah, Enviro Source via Epsilon Associates. And there was a, this is on Route 5 and 10. Uh, this is on the eastern side. If you're heading north, you'd be going to the right near. And a good chunk of this sidewall um, just kind of disappeared in the last storm. And they have had an open permit with us for a while, just down the way um, for other repairs and riprap and so forth. And so the request came to to us to um, be able to go ahead in this <clears throat> new eroded area to do repairs with the new grading and um, uh, new riprap put in place here to hold this wall back. And um, they requested that they can just go ahead and request it to, to the commission that could have made it to, that can just go ahead and do the shoot cares without uh, additional permitting or new permitting. And, um, you know, I granted the, um, the okay that this is an ongoing area of repair. So we didn't ask them to come back through with yet another uh, NOI or RDA, whatever. Uh, this is ongoing and, and obviously needs um, some repair. So I uh, hope you all are okay with that decision. But I can really get this fixed pretty quick. <laughs> if you go up there, I would buy there today. It's still, they haven't got to it yet. But there's, there's a lot of a lot of issues up in the, uh, the railroad area. All right, the uh, next order of uh, on the agenda tonight is from um, Eagle Brook, and it's the Whipple uh, Pond Management Report. And this is a report that is part of their um, ongoing, this is the annual report, it was submitted on 12-7. So this is relative to the uh, to an active orders of conditions for the pond. Um, this is part of their stormwater management um, process up in the area, and conditions were put on quite some time ago, and they're, they're in effect. I mean, they're gonna, I think the letter states that they're going to be doing it uh, at least another three years or so. Uh, this is DEP put out number one four two zero two one seven. Um, I don't know if you had a chance to read through this or not. Um, but there was a lot of um, algae and, and, and uh, plant growth and so forth in the in the pond uh, over the year, and there was like three or four applications of pesticides. Um, they were captan. Uh, can't think of the other one on the top of my head. Um, but think you know, taking a lot. Of, a lot of the algae out, a lot of the aquatic moss and so et cetera. Um, they have been really good at getting us the you know, pond management reports. And so this is the annual one that was submitted uh, on 12-7 and it uh, kind of closes out the year. Um, I think in some place here, I can read it real quick. Uh, yeah, it started since uh, 2017 and we're doing this. And um, so you can see the pictures here, um, but I, I'm, I definitely know that it's been extended another three years of additional work that they'll have to do on a seasonal basis um, with alum application and 
um, some of the other sites, etc. Um, to this location. And, uh, this is prior to it. You can see a lot of the material growing up there in, um, in April, prior to treatment. And then uh, you can see the growth in this area. Um, and they've been you know, working on that right along. And, and like I said, it's been going on since at least 2017. So that one is to, to um, review and, and, and accept it to the file to the uh, DA. Um, there's no motion needed on this, uh, but we, uh, I certainly appreciate the, uh, the details and the continued efforts in this uh, location. And if anybody has any questions or concerns, we can discuss that and see if you have to do anything different, but there is a pretty good uh, write-up by SPCA and, and what they're doing, what they want to do going forward. Any other comments or anything there? No, it is good. Okay. Um, all right, so the next part of the agenda is uh, uh, the general discussion area. And the first uh, item that we put in here is the status of the Cumberland Farm Contention uh, Farm Contention Pond cleanup project. And I don't know, Amy, I don't think Don showed up. I don't think it was here. No. Uh, so. Uh Go ahead, I was going to say this. Um, yeah, this isn't a hearing, so we don't right. need to do anything. They are um, waiting for a report from their contractor on how they're going to manage this. And once they have that um, all set, they're going to submit. I think for the next meeting, they're going to submit the contractor's plan for your approval. Yeah, we're hoping that they. We requested it last time that they did it. It was a couple of weeks before our next meeting. So I can review it. Um, with the holidays, it's not so no, but it's something we don't know even if we do that. Uh, but they'll come back to us in January. So there's no ongoing hearing or anything of that nature. It's just um, once we see, as we said last time, once we see the plan, we have, we really have no idea right now how to address the plan <laughs> because we haven't seen the plan. Um, you know, there's resource areas right there, and um, the online management plan that we have to adhere to, et cetera. So we have to take a look at the plan, and then we'll have to uh, make a decision what, what we need to do on any conditions or anything else that we need to do to come forward to the, <clears throat> relative <clears throat> to that project. So that is just a um, an update on the status of that. Any questions there? Coming. Um, you know, it really needs to be done. I'm glad they're hopefully they're moving forward with it. Yeah, the, the planning board made it a condition of their um getting their amendment to build the parking spaces that they take care of that. So they, they are moving and they are motivated. Let's put it yeah, that way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's gonna hold up their their other project for sure. <clears throat> So the next item is uh, we were asked to um, support the Open Space and Recreation Committee's plan to collaborate with the Plankton Land Trust to submit a Community Preservation Act grant which will be applicable to the Town and Deerfield Preservation Committee to establish permanent uh, protection through conservation restrictions of four areas that are held by the town. Um, these are uh, the Ridge, uh, up at the, at the bridge, a steel mill forest map 7939, Jumpic Rock map 80, lot one, Pineus Memorial Forest map 81, lot three, and Birchwood, uh, Birchwood Nature Refuge map 138, lot five. And I had talked to uh, the folks on the uh, recreate or uh, the open space committee uh, a few times who've gone over this. Um, these are lands that are held, um, correct me if I'm wrong, anymore, but they're owned by the town of Deerfield. Um, yes. And, and they were put into recreation use, some of them even in their 
um, the documents that would be monitored by the conservation commission, uh, as conservation land. We don't, with our bylaws, now we have our own bylaws, we don't have the ability to do that. We can take over the parcels as a conservation commission unless we do, you know, get the grant and debt authority from the select board and the town vote, probably, because it would be a bylaw. Um, so what they have done is go to the Franklin Land Trust, um, who is willing to work with the town on uh, putting together this grant application um, in order to establish permanent protection um, for these parcels um, via the Franklin Land Trust. Um, they asked us for um, our support of that. And in talking with them, I even myself, um, I am fully supportive uh, of doing that so that we can get um, those parcels permanently uh, protected from a conservation aspect. Uh, but we wanted to show you this quick letter that uh, Amy put together. We'll probably uh, revise it a little bit, but this is the draft and and see what you all think about, you know, um, I can write it on our behalf, but uh, I need to know whether you guys all <laughs> support it as well. <laughs> Did you say that the purchase of the four properties was specifically for recreation? Was um, funds from, I mean, is that the case? It was, these properties, I, th I think, and I, think I should have looked at my notes, but a lot of them were granted to the town like many, many years ago as, you know, keep this as, uh, you know, private property was turned over to the town. Okay. Um, and it was to be a recreation and or conservation uh, okay. land. Uh, right. I, I know one or two of the lots even specifically said to be, you know, monitored by a conservation information or whatever. We don't have that jurisdiction, but it was passed over from private landowners to the town at, at some point. Okay. Is I just was asking more is uh you know it, that it wasn't they weren't given to the town for any other open purposes like if the town needed solar or you know any other future infrastructure type developments um but I can I see yeah I fully support it as well yeah you know I I read through at least some of the agreements and I have a file here someplace but I. It could be open for other things, John. I honestly don't know just what the writing is, the legalities of it. I think if the town property, if the town can do that, but I think what the um, open space committee is trying to do is preserve these parcels as conservation land yep. and put them under, um, you know, a regular, not a regulatory, but a, you know, kind of official heading, which we can't do. Um, you know, maybe in 2024, I'll start talking to the, the select board about getting, you know, looking at bylaws for the conservation commission. So that we could take over from the town some of these type of areas and mark them and, you know, put it in our area. But right now we don't have the, um, the ability to do so with the uh, regulatory rights of people. So this is kind of a, uh, you know, a way to, to keep them in conservation without having to wait for to get the bylaws in place, put them in trust to leave that, put them in the permit. Um, and I think maybe maybe I'm wrong here, but I think there's a the land trust would take get the grants for it, but it would still be under the town of Deerfield ownership. For, to, yeah, so yeah. we did this in, in Hatfield. We worked with the yeah. Franklin Land Trust in this way, and it's and I was on the CPA, um, so or CPC, so I I heard these, and it's you know I'm not sure of all the details, but yeah, it's it's a transaction in which the the land trust, I guess, um, purchases the the conservation restriction, and the land stays with the town, but there is the this conservation restriction, and it's a way of protecting the land and, and it worked very well in Hatfield. Yeah. And it may be, you know, down the road if we're if the conservation commission is given the authority, 
maybe it comes back to us down there. I don't know, but at least they're able to be protected and they're really trying to protect some of these areas. And some of these, uh, I, mean, I think they want to on uh, not something road, something road maybe. Uh, I mean, it's good 30, the name 35 alone. acres or so. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, steam mill forest and birchwood nature refuge. It it seems pretty obvious the reason why these were donated to the town. So yeah, I just yeah. wanted to check in on that. No, great questions because it's a little bit different. Anything else, or would you? We're gonna clean up this letter a little bit, but in essence, uh, maybe okay with the um, you know the letter of support. Yep. Okay. Okay. So just discussion area. Um, we're really, I guess we have a long agenda, but I didn't think it was going to take so long. So this is great. Um, so Eversource, this is on mail. Um, is, is there an annual letter of right away vegetation maintenance activities? And they send out a letter. I don't know what they're going to do. Um, one in clearing of education and tree removals and so forth and vegetation management and uh, how they got to clear it up around the lines. Um, it's all done within, you know, the um, the authority of a lot of the different regulations and so forth. So this is kind of just a notice we get every year. They're gonna, this is what they're going to do in 2020. Have a notification. Any questions on any of that or comments or concerns? Nope. And then there was a two, and this is their match with where their lines run down through here. Um, the few kind of miscellaneous notes, I guess we'll call them that we received. This is from Mass Energize. Um, when they want us to know about the upcoming 2024 Community Climate Leaders Conference. So if anybody is interested in attending this conference or uh, want to look into it, you can have it all in your meeting packet and uh, let me know. And if you want to go, we can see what the uh, it'll cost and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then the second one was um, Ebb and flow from the Mass Division of uh, Ecological Restoration. This is kind of a, a newsletter um, in the fall, and just kind of explains what the uh, what the group is doing. And so it's just uh, informational. And if there's anything, if anybody has any interest here or doing anything, or anything, just let me know. But those are just two pieces of uh, information we got on the way in. Uh, or in the left hand side. So let's quick going through the agenda. We have two R RCOs, RCOCs done. Um, and get these and updated. There's a, just a couple of other things that unanticipated um, in the last 48 hours. Um, had a note from Chief Victoria this morning that. Uh, there's another section of River Road. It is, I want to say, 5.7. Um, the first one was 717. That they're going to start working on um, the week of January 8th. Um, they're going to have to redo the slope, uh, put in even a little bigger than riprap, but you know, some real stabilizing stones coming across and then riprap on top. Um, I'm going to look at that with um, with John and Ken next week sometime towards the end of the week, and I'll let you guys know if something wants to go out there and do that as well. Uh, there are some some brooks that go through that area, so we're probably in a you know resource area. Uh, this might be an emergency um, certificate response kind of thing coming up there, um, and I think that would be the last one right now. And, probably until we get into the spring. Uh, and then there will be a few more. Um, there's a little bit more uh, erosion control uh, firms and, and 
fencing that has to be done up by Richardson Candy. Um, I believe that'll be done by tomorrow. And then um, I'm actually not sure where we're at. Um, no. Maybe they're already maybe they must be where they're at. They're really doing that over and all over. Who's it, Road? Um, just where they stand there, but I'll, I'll find out. See what kind of the update on um, some of the emergency uh, certificates. And then uh, one of the other things, uh, again, I had a note from the, um, I don't know, taking care of sunny days, uh, Ken Bougalane, um yesterday. Uh, so they're continuing, the weather's been pretty mild. They're continuing to do some more tree removal. And he's hoping to get some uh, erosion control in place um, over the next couple of weeks. And so um, I probably will stop in. He said he's going to be working there tomorrow. I'll probably go by and stop, just stop in and see what they'll do there. But you know, the Sunny Days project is moving forward. And uh, they seem to be you know, following the checkbox of what needs to be done on to the next one. So well, those are the two things that just came up. In, Yesterday and today, I think. Um, other than that, I think that kind of wraps a lot of little different things for tonight, but we got a lot of little different things done. Um, and I think in January, we'll probably be looking at um, there's going to be one or two new NLIs and RDAs coming in, I believe. Uh, if people want to do that, and also, um, you know, maybe we'll see the plans from the uh, one time. I think about the January meeting. It'll probably be another shorter one, but we'll probably have some really good things to look at. Oh, also, yeah, I forget something in there. I forgot. Uh, but on January 25th, um, the uh, another Committee that I'm working on, uh, the Climate Resilience uh, MVP, the Joint Oak Committee. Um, we're looking at doing potentially a farmers forum um, at the town offices. Um, and the two items that we're, we're going to take a look at is really talking about the uh, Wetlands Protection Act uh, and how the farmers. Can work with us on that and, and how we go through a lot of their uh, agricultural exemptions. And I've asked uh, Mark Stinson and his boss if they'd be available to come up and give a talk in that morning. And it'll probably, it's, not, it's all tentative right now, uh, but it's probably on the 25th from 10 to noon. And then um, Carolyn Ness from her conservation um, group, a uh, large group, will also be doing. A presentation that was on grants and, and so forth. So, but it's going to be really tailored to uh, the farmers in the area. And we hopefully uh, are able to get uh, a number of farmers to show up and kind of explain, you know, what we do and so forth. And once we get more information, because we won't have another meeting before then, so we'll send out information to hope beforehand. Um, but we're technically looking at January 25th, 10 to noon. Uh, it'd be great to have people show up um, and um, kind of meet people and kind of go through and we're, you know, trying to help them out. A lot of the uh, farmers just really don't understand the uh, uh, Wetlands Protection Act and how it relates. So they kind of like, they want to stay away from all that <laughs> and not deal with it. But, you know, they're, uh, they're an area that could really, really help us out with it. Uh, like climate resiliency, floodplain management, um, you know, water flows. Um, that'd be really. Hopefully, it'll uh, it'll uh, occur on the uh, on uh, late January. So we'll let you know. Any questions on that or anything else? You said that it'd be scheduled for January twenty fifth. January twenty fifth. Uh, okay. Ten to noon. I think it's a Thursday. Yeah, it's a Thursday because we'll have our meeting that night. All right. And that'll be at the um, town offices. I haven't heard back from uh, DEP yet, um, but I got a notice that they're 
really not working with this week, so I hope we're going to hear next week. Huh. Anything else here, folks? I can make a motion to uh, adjourn the meeting at 645. That'd be one of our quickest ones, but that'd be good. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. <laughs> the second from Ann Mary. I second that. All right. Motion now is able to adjourn 645. Um, you know, like comments, we take a quick roll call. Sean Libby. Sean Libby, aye. Ben Byrne. Ben Byrne, aye. And Mary Cloutier. And Mary Cloutier, aye. And Pete Law, aye. So here's the wrap. <laughs>